In this tutorial, we're going to discover how to use divs in our web pages and how divs can be used to lay out our web pages better. So to start off with, I've just got a basic HTML page with just a head section with a title and a link pointing to a style1.css. And I've got my style1.css uh, file over here as well with nothing in it at the moment. So straight away, I'm going to put in a div tag. And that's all these divs are. They're just another HTML tag. And I'm just going to put some content in it. I'm just going to put the word test in it. And then I'm going to close off the div with an end div tag. Let's save that and let's see what it looks like in the browser. And there it is. We just get the word test. doesn't look as if anything is there other than just the word test. And from that point of view, I suppose divs are slightly similar to paragraphs. Divs in themselves don't actually do anything by themselves. We can't see them. They don't give any height or width unless there's content in them. And so therefore, we have to use styles to make them useful or valuable. So I'm going to go back to my text editor, and then I'm going to go into my style sheet that's connected to this HTML page. And I'm going to put in the selector div, and I'm going to open up a rule section here. And in there, uh, the first thing we're going to do, just to make it obvious that there's a div there, I'm going to put the background color, uh, and I'm going to set it to a red. Okay, let's save that, go back to our browser, and let's take a look when I refresh. So you can see again, without putting any width or height on it, uh, the width just spans across the whole window width. The height is dictated by the actual content that's in the div, unless I tell it otherwise. And just to show you that, if I go back into my code, and I go back into my HTML, if I take the content away from inside this div, because I haven't got any height that is defined in the uh, style sheet, when I go back to my browser now and refresh, I don't see anything at all. The div is actually technically still there, but because there's no content to define any height in it, and I haven't defined height in any other way, it just disappears. Let me go back to my code. I'm going to put that content back in there and save that, and then I'm going to go back into my style sheet as well. And I'm going to define a width and a height for uh, this div. So the height, I'll define it as a pixel value, 150 pixels. And the width, I'll define it as the same. So I'm going to get a square div. Let's save that. Let's go back to the browser and see how that works. So I can see I've got a square div there. I can do lots of other different rules on that div. I go back to my style sheet. Uh, for instance, I might want to put in a border. So border, uh, I'll do the shorthand version. So I'll put a five pixel border on it. I will make it solid and I will color it black. So I'm going to go back and refresh and I see the border come on that div. And there are a multitude of other different rules I could apply to that div. Background images, I could alter the margins, the border size, the paddings, and many other items as well. But for the moment where we want to go, that's fine for me. Now, I'm going to go back to the code, and uh, I'm going to go into my HTML. And rather than just have one div, I'm just going to add in uh, another three divs. Now remember, in my style sheet, when I actually made the rule, I just had a single div as a selector. So that means any div that crops up in the HTML pages that point to this style sheet, they will all take on these rules of this div selector. So if I go back to my browser and refresh, I should see all four of my divs there pop up. Now, as you can see, unless the browser is told otherwise through rules in the CSS sheet, uh, the divs will just come in one after the other, and they will come in on separate lines. That's because, by default, there's no float set on any of these divs, so they are inline, meaning that the whole div, if you like, takes rights over the whole line that it's on, um, and so it won't allow anything else beside it. And really all that I can do there without floating it is I can just change the margins left and right and move it into the center, that kind of thing. Every other div that comes in, it goes on to the next line, then the browser puts the third one in on the next line after that, and so on. Rather than keep it that way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get all my divs to float in beside each other. 
and I'm going to do that again by putting it into my style sheet in the div section and I remember all the divs that are in that HTML page because this div selector is here um, it's going to pick up on all of these rules so when I actually put in this property float and I ask all the divs to float left then all the divs should pick up on that rule so I'm going to save that I'm going to go back and let's refresh by setting the float property to left it changes all the objects that follow that uh, rule and it changes them into like floating objects on, on top of a pool of water. So if the browser can, it will fit anything that comes after it in beside the property that is floated left. And so because all of these different objects, they all follow the float property left, they all float in as long as there's room. But you'll find if I actually change the browser window size and I move it down, you can see that it's only if the actual browser has room to actually fit the properties inside the width of the browser window that allows them to come in beside one another. Just to put a bit of a little buffer in between each of those different divs, I'm going to go back to my style sheet and again in the div selector I'm just going to put in a slight margin all the way around. I'm not going to do margin left, right or any of those, it's just margin all the way around the divs and I'll set it to something small like uh, 20 pixels. So I'll save that, go back and refresh and we can see that they're all spread out by 20 pixels. Now, it's not that this is 20 pixels here, because this first div, it's got a 20 pixel margin all the way around. And this second div also has a 20 pixel margin all the way around. This distance between these two divs is actually 20 pixels on this side and 20 pixels on this side. So that's actually 40 pixels. Looking at the divs that I have so far, they are all identically formatted because they are all following this div selector that is in the actual style sheet. Doing that is a little bit restrictive because I may want other divs that do slightly different things from one another. Uh, they may have unique properties and if I just have one single div selector I can only have them all looking the same. So I want to change that. I want to have some of the properties being the same of all these different divs because most of the time I want them to keep the same size I want to, to keep the same black border, uh, but each individual div, I would like them to have different background colors. So let's have a look at my style sheet and let's see how we can achieve that. The first thing I'm going to do is all of these properties that all of the divs have in common, I'm going to define them as a class. And the way I do that is I nip in here beside the div selector and I put in a dot to no denote a class and then I put in a label, a label that I choose myself uh, just to describe what type of class of div this is. So I'm saying that all of these divs are content divs. That label, once I've decided that that is the label of the class, I need to go back in to my index.html page and I need to show that all of these different divs, they are of class content. So I put in a class attribute in the start tag of each of these divs and call it content. I'm labeling them all content so they will all still pick up on those rules. So I copy that there, there and there. That's fine. All of those divs now are of class content and they should pick up on any rules that have dot content as the class. So going back to my browser, nothing has actually changed when I refresh that. But it just allows me a little bit more flexibility now to actually then go ahead and define unique IDs for individual divs that have unique properties. So like I said, what I would generally want is that each of these different divs, that they have different background colors, but all the other properties remain the same. So I'm going to go into my style sheet again, and I'm going to create IDs, and I'm going to say there are particular divs with unique properties that only they hold. So anytime that I want to do an ID, I put in a div selector and this time I'm actually going to put in a hash symbol to denote a particular ID. Just like with the class I get to choose what label I put on any particular ID. So for the first div I'm just going to write in the label first and I'm going to open up the curly braces there and just for this first div I'm going to define what the actual background color is. Now I'm going to take the background color from the actual content class 
So I'm not defining the background color in the class anymore that all of the different divs will pick up. I am just defining it for each separate ID. And so any div that has an ID attribute in the HTML and that is set to the value first will pick up on this background property here. Any of the divs that have a class attribute identified or set to content will pick up on all these content rules. So I'm just going to save that. And again, I'm going to go back into my HTML and I'm going to say that this first div is of ID first. So that first div will pick up on all the rules in the content class as defined in the style sheet and also all the rules in the first ID as defined in the style sheet. All the rest of the divs for the moment, they're just going to pick up the rules on the content class. And remember, I'm after taking out the background color rule from the content class. So what I would expect to see is that the first div picks up all of the rules from the content class and is colored red because that background color has now been moved to the first ID in the style sheet here. And then all of the other divs will remain white because no background color has been defined for them. Let's go to the browser and take a look. And that's what happens. Now, I'd like to go back to my style sheet and I'd actually like to keep on going with this idea of IDs and create three more IDs, second, third, and fourth, with different background colors for each. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy what I have there for that selector, two, three, four. I'm going to change the actual ID names to second, third, and fourth. And I'm going to change the colors. So I'm going to have red for the first one, green for the second, blue for the third, and I am going to put yellow in as the fourth color. So now, last piece of the jigsaw is I have to go back into my HTML and identify this second, third, and fourth ID div, sorry, the second, third, and fourth div as ID second. Third one has an ID of third. And the fourth has an ID of fourth. There we go. So again, all of the divs pick up the rules from the content class and I've then just defined in one place at the top of my style sheet here. And then each of the individual divs, depending on what ID they have, pick up the different rules from those different ID areas. So what we should get now is all of the divs look the same apart from their background colors. Yet each of them have a separate background color. So let's go back to the browser and check. Something's happening with my... I just had an extra digit in my hexadecimal color. Sorry about that. So I'll save that, go back and refresh. And there's the yellow. So organizing my divs in this way, where I've got all of the rules they share in common in one class, and then each of their individual rules in different ID selectors, it makes it very efficient. I can make sure that any of the rules that they all share together, that I only write them once, and that means that if I have to change them, I only need to change them in one place. Whereas any of the different things that make them unique, well, I can do that as well in the different ID areas. So for example, if I decided that I wanted to make all of the different content divs a little bit bigger, so instead of being 150 by 150, I made them 250 by 250. I could easily do that just in one place, refresh, and they all pick up on it. And also, if I wanted to change one of the unique properties, so for example, if I wanted to change the background color of this fourth content div to purple, I could just do that by moving down here to the fourth ID and just changing the color to purple. 
go back and refresh and I get my purple color. So I've complete control and the great thing about it is, is that my CSS rules are very, very efficient. I'm only writing the bare minimum of CSS rules. And so my CSS style sheet is uh, kept nice and tidy and easy to change.